Hi friends, I recently came across a blog in PyTorch that shows how to improve the performance of an LLM from mere 25 tokens per second to almost 25 tokens, 250 tokens per second. To do this, they use four techniques. One is torch.compile, GPU quantization, that is basically converting FP16, trying in date, trying in four. And the other interesting was the one is speculative decoding, which is becoming a norm in most of the LLM serving layers, and tensor parallelism. Tens of parallelism basically it allows allows us to use multiple GPUs, right? In order to see how it looks like, if you look at the Lama 7 billion eager model, the 25 tokens per second looks like this. Whereas the, at the end of the blog, you will look at all the techniques that went into optimizing it so that the inference happens in a super fast way. Before we enter into torch.compile, let's look at a graph that shows us how GPU and CPU are spending their time when they're processing the tokens. If you cl observe clearly, you can see that the GPU is lying idle for most of the time and processing or actually doing the real work at very smaller period of time. Given the price of GPUs, we don't want the GPUs to be doing that. The CPU looks very busy, but most of the job is actually being done by GPU. The reason for that is the CPU has to of ship all the operations one at a time to the GPU. This also comes because of the way PyTorch works in its eager mode, right? So torch.compile kind of converts this sim single operations into a graph. So instead of carrying on a single operation to a GPU at a time, it carries a much larger layers. It figures out how to combine these two and send it to the GPU. So that the GPU is busy doing its work for most of the time while the CPU is preparing the data for orchestration. To reduce the CPU overhead, we can use torch.compile, but just using torch.compile does not solve the problem. The reason there are two reasons for that. One is KV cache and the second one is prefill phase. Let's start looking at what is KV cache and how it impacts and how to fix that problem, right? Before we get into KV cache, let's take a step back and understand how transformer works at a very high level, right? When you pass an input prompt to a transformer block, it has to take the entire input prompt and it generates the probability of the next token. So this is your input block. This is your uh, predicted block. This predicted block is appended to the input and this entire new input is again passed into the transformer block. If you look at entire transformer architecture, there's only one layer which needs this entire prompt, which is attention layer. And inside attention layer, there are two important components, key, key and value. And there are other things like queue and mask, which we'll not get into uh, those things in this video. Let's just look at K and V. Since we need K and V for each of this iteration, right, for every new token that we're going to generate, there is an inference optimization that is being done, which is caching this memory, basically the key and va value for the entire input prompt and for all the previous tokens once in the transformer architecture so that inference becomes faster. If we understand this, we will also understand why it is harder to optimize this because every time there is a new token, the cache size increases. And the number of tokens that is being generated is not known much in advance. Of course, we know the maximum number of tokens, but not the exact number of tokens that ge gets generated for that particular prompt. So it's harder to optimize the memory growth, right? And every time we have to copy and increase the memory, which makes it an anti-pattern and we end up getting into the previous issue of CPU overhead. To avoid this, the solution that PyTorch team proposed is a static KV cache. Instead of dynamically growing this memory, we allocate a predefined memory, which is basically equal to the batch size, which is one in this case, and the maximum sequence length. Doing this, now the torch.compiled knows exactly the static cache memory. So it does not need to, or it can combine all these operations into one single graph and reduce the CPU overhead. The second obstacle that we need to solve before we take the advantage of torch compiled is something called prefill phase. To understand that, let's look at again the transformer, how it works. We have an input prompt and then we kind of de uh, generate the output tokens and the number of output tokens we generate is dynamic in nature. That's why we solve that by using static KV cache. 
and with that and torch compel we reduce the overhead but there is one uh, another caveat that we missed which is the dynamic nature of the prompt you could ask a simple question or you can probably pass a long document and ask questions based on it right so the prefill phase or the input to the transformer is dynamic in nature so we cannot use the same compile strategies for the decode and the prefill so what the pytorch team did is they used different strategies for this were for the decode the right side of it they said mode reduce overhead basically you reduce the cpu movement and the, for the prefill since it's dynamic in nature they use a separate strategy called dynamic equal to true basically it optimizes on the uh, on how the algorithm is creating the kernels required for processing these algorithms on gpu once you do these two or three techniques that we discussed we notice that the utilization or the tokens being generated has jumped up from 25.5 to 107 tokens per second on a single a100 gpu which is like 320 percent improvement without doing a lot in the code of course the pytorch team has done a heavy lifting in torch.compile by generating kernels required for running it on either nvidia or amd gpu in the blog they also show one more uh, experiment where they did the same thing on amd and they show how much improvement it's done which also shows how much uh, device agnostic pytorch can be the second most important thing that the pytorch team did is using quantizational technique before we get into quantization technique let's look at a high level what happens when we try to predict the token using a transformer you have input tokens that goes into transformer weights the transformer weights are in gpu memory and the transformer block generates an output right but inside gpu you have two kinds of memory one is your global memory which in this case is a 180 gb 80 gb and for each the operation required the memory that is sorry the model weights that are required the model weights is copied from global memory to the register memory to do the operation right so what they realized is the only variable in making it faster is reducing the bytes per parameter okay by default we use now it's fp16 or bf16 has become the default for model loading and which takes two bytes per parameter and in this case it's 7 billion so it's like 7 billion into 14 billion parameters they looked at that just by reducing from fp16 to int8 they can bring down the bytes from 2 to 1 that's like half right so they converted that into int8 and they did not just stop there right so the weights in the global memory is right now an int8 they copy this int8 weights to the register once they copy to the register they convert the int8 back to fp16 or bf16 so that there is no issue in the computation right just by doing this they actually observed a performance degrade okay they have to use torch.compile to actually see a performance improvement right so this light blue line shows the uncompiled version of int8 and this dark blue line shows the best performing result which is basically torch compile plus int8 the reason for that is again torch.compile is able to generate custom kernels optimized for int8 fusion right they also did the same approach with int4 with int8 there was little loss or similar accuracy was noticed but with int4 the training is more complicated so there are some advanced approaches to do it but with int4 they're able to get similar level of performance or there's a slight difference in the performance but the performance is much better than int8 but in industry today most of them use int8 for production use cases things like olama uses int4 as a default quantization technique once you apply this quantization uh, at just int8 quantization you notice that there is a significant improvement in the performance which is 47 percentage which is 157 tokens per second on a single a100 the third important technique that they use to improve the performance is called speculative decoding it was first introduced in a google defined paper and another paper that's also published by google i guess the key idea behind speculative decoding is instead of using one large model you use a combination of a large model and a small model let's start with a small model let's say for example 
we start with Llama 3.17 billion. Let's say, let's forget about the Llama. Let's say we have an 8 billion model. We have a 70 billion model. We pick up the 8 billion model as uh, the draft model or let's say the dummy model, which takes the input prompt and generates one token. We take up to, let's say, five tokens. So this model, 8 billion model, has generated five tokens. We combine the input with this five tokens and we get a new prompt. We pass this prompt, the larger one, basically input plus the end prompts generated, so end tokens generated, to the 70 billion model. So what the 70 billion model generates is prediction for the next word occurrence for each of these tokens along with the length of the prompt plus the end tokens generated plus the new token that is being predicted, right? And then we compare the results between the newly generated probability with the predictions of the smaller model, in this case, the 8 billion model, right? If the prediction is greater than, let's say, for example, Llama 3 billion, 8 billion model predicts a word called A, and the larger model also predicts A, and the probability is higher than this, we just keep it. Let's say, for example, for the same word A, the smaller model predicted a probability of 0.5, the larger model predicted a probability of 0.7 for a different word, then we kind of disregard this and throw away all the outputs generated by the smaller model. But this mismatch can either happen at the first prediction or at the fifth prediction, which helps the larger model to predict five tokens or six tokens at once instead of predicting one single token at a time. This entire concept is called speculative decoding. It helps improve the model performance uh, from probably, let's say, same, it maybe does not improve the performance at all to maybe 2x, 3x, or 4x. I think it's usually 2x. In the blog, they have actually explained two examples. Let's look at this. One is Code Llama. Okay, it's here. When they combine Code Llama 34 billion model, which is the larger model, with the Code Llama 7 billion model, they observed a 2x boost. When they did the same technique on Llama 7 billion and Llama 1 billion, they actually found that 1.3x boost. The reason for this difference is, if the small model is not powerful enough, it can predict the five tokens in a very inaccurate way, right? Only when the smaller model and the larger model are in sync, and the smaller model can predict most of the tokens right. That's when you actually notice a performance improvement. So choosing the smaller model and the tokenization method, which should be same for both these models, is very important for speculative decoding to work. And we can also observe that speculative decoding is implemented in major LLM serving layers. So it's usually a flag. I have not tried it out. Probably in some of the coming videos, I'll try it out and make a video on those things. Now we have looked at the key concepts that the Torch team used to improve the token size, so tokens per second from mere 25.5 to 244.7 tokens per second by combining compile, int4, and speculative decoding. They also included one section at the last, which is tensor parallelism, which they used on the larger model, uh, 70 billion, not the Lama 7 billion. You can basically, basically the idea is you can use multiple GPUs and tensor parallelism to split your operations on multiple GPUs, right? And all of this was done in less than 1000 lines of code. And the entire code is available in this repository called GPT Fast, which I would be looking at. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to understand most part of it. Probably try to recreate it and make a video on the same. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you like the video, please let us know in the comments or let us know in the Discord channel and help us share the video with your friends. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.